Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacRate Studio. I'm Mark Spencer. Steve Martin's with me again today. And we're talking Final Cut Pro 10. And music-based editing. And music-based editing. So editing while you're listening to music. Well, not quite. No. It's, it's actually... It's difficult to do. It's actually a music-driven cut. So like music, music, vi- music videos, that Music sort of determines kind of how you're doing your edit. Exactly. Okay. Sure, sure. Do I mean, that's really common. You mean, you know, you're going to cut a music video, you want to cut something, some event that's where the primary element is music. And advertising, promos, anything. A lot of it, music's a big, big part of it, and you kind of want to integrate it so that the cuts seem to match it, right? Exactly. Okay. So as you can see here, I have a piece of music um, mm-hmm. already laid out in the timeline. I've already got markers placed in, in the primary storm. By the way, this may seem a little odd for people coming from Legacy of Final Cut Pro or even other nonlinear editing system where, where in this case, uh, you were used to be seeing the music track like down below. Right. But this is if I, you I, had tracks. That's right. If you had tracks, but you don't. I actually right. have it placed in the primary storyline. Yeah, you start with the music right in the primary storyline. Now, line. if you think of it, it, makes sense because that's the primary thing we're going to be cutting to. Yes. So it's in the primary storyline. Yes, yes. It does so, seem a little odd at first. That's okay. Odd. So I, uh, I basically I played this back, and as I was playing it back in real time, I pressed M on the keyboard to actually add the so markers. You just keep tapping the M key, yeah, just and, like we've done in for many years in other apps. Exactly. Uh-huh. So so basically, I've uh, got these markers with snapping on. You can see these are essentially the downbeat, major downbeats. Okay. Okay. I think these are eight measures a piece. Um, little, little can, long, can but we hear a little bit of it to see kind of how. It, how sure, it works. sure. So. Downbeats. Yep. Downbeats. Okay. Okay. So what we want to do is set up a three-point edit. Now I covered three-point editing in a previous Mac break. If you want to go back and, and watch that episode, it's probably good. But essentially, what we want to do is define a selection range in the timeline that determines how long the clip's going to be that's in the event library. Right. So rather than determining the clip length, it's like the clip's got to fit within this particular exactly. between two markers, basically. Exactly. Okay. Right. So I'm going to show you different ways to mark between markers. Okay. Okay. One method would be to get the range selection tool. Now, I'm going to show you a great keyboard shortcut. Now, I could go up here and select the range selection tool, then go back to select the arrow. Yes. That's, that's slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the R key, and notice it temporarily turns into the um, the uh, selection, the range, the range, the range selection. selection. I'm going to hold down the R so key. You, hold, you could tap it to switch to the range right. tool, but you're actually I'm holding, holding it down, down right now. And I'm okay. going to drag across marker to marker. And before, I release my mouse first, yeah. and then the and key, then. and notice it stays the selection tool. Uh, so you temporarily turned into the range tool just to set a range Correctly. there. Correctly. So I'm going to set a range between here, release mouse, release key, stays the selection arrow. So if you didn't use the range tool and you clicked and dragged like that, you wouldn't get a range? Like um, if you just clicked and dragged without touching the keyboard, and you clicked and dragged on the clip between you, two markers. You can't with the selection oh, you tool. You have it's to switch to the range tool. Okay. Got the it. other way, and I think is even faster, is just use clip skimming. And this is really a new a feature was added in 10.02. But uh, make sure clip skimming is on because it's really handy. Because that way your mouse it skims within the clip, and so you skim to the marker, press I, skim to the other marker, press O. You've, effect, okay. you've effectively done the same thing. And you're, you have snapping turned on. I have snapping's right? turned on, as you can see the snapping indicator over right, here. Okay, yeah. Which is really handy, and you know it's the same keyboard shortcut as Final Cut Seven. It's the N, it's the silent, go. silent yep. N, or silent S. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so you can skim, well, sapping, right? Or sapping or or snapping. <laughs> okay, so you can move over here, and then so you can see you can just skim to the marker. Yeah, you know, I. tap I, skim to the out out marker, tap O. Okay. So let's do a couple of these here. So I'm gonna uh, tap O on this one. Notice because it's the first start of the clip, and already it already assumes right. The beginning, right. So what I'm gonna do is go up and uh, to my event library and get my first clip. I'm gonna just get there's my my girls Rachel and Kate running along the beach to jump into the ocean. So I'm gonna go ahead and skim. I'm gonna press I to set a range. Uh, in point. Now right. I don't have to set an out point because okay. the out point is going to be determined by the range that I have currently selected yeah. in the clip down here, yes. right? So all I have to do now is press a keyboard shortcut Q for a connect edit. Connect edit. Boom. And notice it perfectly matches that yep, first right marker. To the marker. Oh, right. Now that assumes that your clip that you selected in the event browser had enough material to fill that. And if it didn't, section. it would warn you. It would get boop. No, we just or say there's not a material. I'm gonna exactly. Okay. Well, that, that, That's that, a better warning than boop. Well, it should actually come up later because I deliberately okay. have a clip that's shorter. So. Ah, okay. oh, great. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark an endpoint, skim to the out, skim to the next mark, mark an out point, 
And I'll go ahead and uh, let's get another, let's, let's start actually, let's, uh, let's start right about here. Here's Rachel's boogie boarding, mark an endpoint. Actually, let's do a back time to edit. Let's yeah, say, I was wondering if you actually want it, sometimes you have that beat and you want something to happen in the video, you're more interested in the and, last section right. and let it guess on the beginning. Or so not, let, not guess, but let it determine the beginning. Right, so what I'm doing, I've, I've set an out point, right? That's, right a, that's the out point I want, okay. okay? So in other words, I want this out point to be the the point that it back the last times in of video. exactly yes. and uh, so what you're going to need to do is add a modifier key okay okay so instead of just Q it would be shift Q shift Q shift Q would back time that in as you can see now here that's the that out point is your last frame. that is your last frame all right and it just found the first frame it, that would be appropriate to fill the exactly gap. so let's do let's do a couple more together um, again skimming mark in mark out and let's get a little bit of uh, let's get a shot of uh, Andy here. Let's do another back time data. Yeah, so right he's when he collects those rings. Right when he collects those rings, that That's would be so cool. So right there. This is all good. The GoPro camera again, right? That GoPro camera yeah. is just amazing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select an out point, and I'm going to hit Shift uh, Q, and and you can see we're, we're we're building this little this little edit up yep. here. So I'll just play a little bit of it, as you can see. Right on the beat. Right, right, right on the beat. Okay. Yeah. Now. There's another way to do this. I haven't, yet, I'm gonna show you yet another way that's, that's even there's fat. more. There's more, yes, there's more. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is select all my audio and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose um, lift from storyline. This is kind of weird, it says lift, because it really doesn't lift it actually. Well, it, it does lift it from the primary storyline. It story takes line. it out of the it primary It takes it out, line. right. And what it does is it then connects it to a gap clip. Okay. Now, you're gonna see why I did this for a second. This is actually pretty cool. So it just became a connected clip, just like the video yep. clips above it, and it's, now you just have a gap in the primary storyline. Right, so basically everything's gonna be connected now All to right. the gap. So what's nice about this is I use my skimmer, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna notice I'm skimming to that marker, I'm yeah, gonna press B. Yeah, still snapping to it. Now I'm gonna press B for blade, and I'm just gonna go through and snap the blade to these markers, and I'm gonna just make cuts right at the gap, right okay. at the markers. And this is pretty fast, because now watch this, I'm gonna switch back to the tool. Notice now when you put your uh, skim or your plate yeah. over and you press X, Every time X you skip, X, will just, mark X will just mark the clip automatically. You don't have, you just move it over there and you don't have to skim, yeah. your, I know, you just move it over and boom, here's your in and out point. So now I'm gonna get my uh, next clip and then let's go ahead and you're gonna see here, I'm gonna press I and I'm gonna press Q and oops, there's not enough media in the source. Uh, to that's a lot better than just a boop. Yeah, it tells you specifically why the edit didn't work. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, continue. Just all right. So it'll be a little short. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm going to actually also zoom in a little bit. And and maybe after playing this back, I've determined that the first shot maybe is a little bit on the screen too long. In fact, this is probably like eight measures, and I maybe want a shot to come in at measure four. Or something. Okay. Like so what's it, yeah. yeah? So what's nice is again, you can get the range tool, press R, and you can just say, all right, I want from here to here. That's what I, I want to get rid of. I want to replace that section there. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go up and I get a, sh a shot of the kids kind of jumping in the pool here, right about there. Mark an endpoint, and I'm going to press Q again. And notice what it does is it connects it above yes. there. So now I've, I've short. I've, I'm, now I got better timing. So I got them running, and then I got them jumping yeah, in the pool. Two quick clips. Yeah. Exactly. And generally, when you're cutting to the beat, you don't necessarily slavishly want to be on every four measures the whole time That's, through because it starts, it starts to get predictable. Right? And, and only mm -hmm. that, but this, this sometimes you, you want to favor the shot, not necessarily the music. You know? Yes, you want yes. To, so so you, might, you might purposely be off the beat or two shots per beat or just mix it up a little bit. So exactly, so not, let's look at how to do that. Since you, great. Guys, you're actually okay. reading my mind. Okay. <laughs> so, I didn't know you were gonna do this either. So what's nice about this, let me switch back to the selection tool, is that um, you're not going to see this second half of this this first shot here, and the reason is is because this this is covered. So uh -huh. you can actually go in here, and I can actually trim this back. And what's nice, this is what I love about magnetic timeline. I have uh -huh. to worry about that shot. As soon as I pull this back, the other one just pops Drops down there. In there yeah. See, and then this may be a little short. Now let, let's say I wanted to extend this clip a little bit. Yeah. If I grab this, I'm just going to drag, and look, the other one just pops out of the way. And yeah. I don't have to worry about the clip. Yeah. I just love, you're right. I don't, I don't want to slavishly edit to the beat. Maybe I want this just slightly longer. Uh -huh. Okay, but now I have a problem of, because this clip is a priority, but this is what's great about the magnetic timeline. All I have to do is, again, keep to keep in alignment, shift key, drag this up, and I've just re-aligned okay, that, that clip. And that one, yep. will, now I'll play this, and I get a little bit longer 
shot of the pool. Past the beat there. Yeah. Exactly. So the magnetic timeline is a tremendous tool I find for quickly making edits and then adjusting them and uh, kind and of. And if getting... you wanted to swap the uh, clips around, you can just pick one up and move it over. Nope. That's for the no? next episode. Oh, so when they're okay. connected clips, because they're, they're, they're connected clips, right? right in the primary but in the line. next episode, we're going to cover secondary storylines, uh, okay. which allow you to quickly okay. swap them out. Okay. Jumping ahead, exactly. So that's essentially how I would approach, you know, a music-driven edit. Building out your edit. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Um, if you want to learn more about how to use Final Cut Pro 10 or Motion or related applications, Ripple Training yeah. is a place to go. In, in, in particular, I cover this in a more detailed fashion in our advanced, uh, advanced editing workflows advanced tutorial. Advanced editing workflows. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Steve, thank you. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.